Should you become a statistician in 2021? In this video, we're going to talk about some pros and cons of choosing this particular occupation. We also need to talk about the difference between, say, becoming a statistician and majoring in statistics. These are two very different things that we're going to get into later in this video. But first, what is a statistician and what do they do? Statisticians develop and apply statistical theories. They use these theories to collect, organize, and interpret numerical data. This is to provide useful information in so many different domains. Statisticians can focus in on biostatistics, agriculture, business, economics, and more. Statistics can be applied to pretty much every single scientific domain. Often statisticians are working with demographers, mathematicians, and people in different scientific domains. And they work with these professionals in order to identify relationships and trends in data. Because of their training, statisticians determine which statistical methods are appropriate in different contexts. They can also be involved in preparing and structuring this data, as well as developing software applications with software developers. To learn more about statistics, check out the Introduction to Statistics course offered through Coursera. And this is offered by Stanford University. To take a course like this in university, it would be thousands of dollars. This Coursera course is less than 100. Check out the link below for more information. So there is multiple roads you can take to become a statistician. The general process is this. First, you get a high school diploma. Then you get a bachelor's degree majoring in statistics. At this point, you can find a job, but there's very few jobs available to statisticians with only a bachelor's degree. So statisticians often have to get a master's degree and some also choose to get a doctoral degree. So most statisticians end up getting a master's degree in statistics and some go on also to get a doctoral degree. And this makes them more competitive. In fact, the Occupational Information Network did a survey and they found that about 15% of employed statisticians have a bachelor's degree, a minority, whereas 65% of statisticians, employed statisticians, have a master's degree and about 20% have a doctoral degree. So most employed statisticians have at least a master's degree. So this is an occupation kind of like sociology or political science, where a lot of people that major in statistics at a bachelor's degree level do not become statisticians. They're using this particular knowledge and skill set in other occupations. In fact, many statisticians have the choice of going into other occupations. They can become actuaries, consultants, data scientists, financial analysts, software developers, teachers and professors, and more. In fact, you kind of see the same thing in sociology and political science. Often people that major in those two different fields don't end up working as sociologists or political scientists. A similar thing happens with statisticians. But for people that do become statisticians, they can do pretty well. Statisticians typically have three different forms of compensation. Most employed statisticians receive a base wage, a bonus every single year, health care, sick leave, and other benefits such as health care. But because this particular occupation is considered a professional occupation, statisticians often aren't receiving overtime wages, they're definitely not getting commissions, and they're not really typically earning stock options. So unlike, say, becoming a registered nurse, a plumber, an electrician, those professionals can earn time and a half above 40 hours a week. Statisticians are most likely going to be salaried. They're not going to earn time and a half above 40 hours a week, and they might end up working unpaid overtime in certain organizations. But as far as base wages are concerned, statisticians do pretty well. In fact, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average national wage for a statistician was $97,170 in 2020. This was more than financial analysts, but it's a little less than actuaries, economists, physicists, mathematicians, and software developers. And like I said previously, a lot of statisticians can easily make their way into those particular fields if they want to. That's one of the beauties of this occupation. You're kind of building a transferable skill set that you can use in many different occupations. Statisticians have also seen pretty good wage growth over the past two decades. In the year 2000, the average base salary for a statistician was $54,630. This rose to $97,170 in 2020, giving us a two-decade wage growth of around $2,000 per year. In the past five years, it's gone up a bit to about 
a little over $2,100 per year. Using this average two-decade wage growth by 2024, the average base salary for a statistician would be around 105,000. By 2030, around 117,000. And these base salaries are not evenly spread out across the entire United States. Specifically in the Northeast Corridor, wages are a lot higher than other parts of the United States. But interesting, actually Idaho, according to the government, had the highest average base salary for statisticians at around 117,000 per year. Can't imagine Idaho has a huge cost of living. This is followed by New Jersey, Massachusetts, and Maryland. So many places in the Northeast Corridor have high base salaries, but you also have some random states like Idaho, which also have a pretty good average base salary for statisticians. So that covers compensation for statistician. What is the job market like? Is it really challenging for a statistician to find a job? In 2020, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, there was 38,860 employed statisticians. And when you look at this particular chart, it looks very insignificant compared to the number of employed software developers. There was about 1.5 million employed and this is employed software developers. This doesn't include self-employed software developers. These numbers are just people that are working for companies or organizations. There were more employed statisticians than actuaries and economists and mathematicians and physicists, but this is a very insignificant workforce compared to the number of employed software developers and financial analysts. But the cool thing about this occupation is many statisticians can become software developers, they can, be, can become data scientists, and they can become financial analysts if they choose. And more good news regarding the job market for statisticians. In the year 2000, there were 17,520 employed statisticians. This grew to 38,860 in 2020. So the workforce actually more than doubled in about two decades. Now, as far as the workforce is concerned, it is actually really regional because it's a workforce of a little over 38,000. There's actually certain cities, certain states that tend to have all the job opportunities for statisticians. In fact, according to the government, California, the Golden State, had the greatest number of employed statisticians at around 5,000. This is probably because of cities and metro areas such as the Bay Area, San Francisco, Silicon Valley, and also LA probably employs quite a few statisticians as well. And as you can see on this map, there are certain states that have very few job opportunities for statisticians. So if your goal is to become a statistician and not make your way into a different occupation, you might have to live in some very specific places. Now, as far as the real-time demand of statisticians, I use three different job boards, Indeed, Glassdoor, and LinkedIn.com. On each of these job platforms, I searched for statistician in the United States, and this is how many job postings I found. On Glassdoor, I found about 1,200 job postings, on Indeed about 2,100, and on LinkedIn about 17,400 job postings. When you compare the number of job postings against the number of employed, it looks pretty good. Around 17,000 job postings on LinkedIn, which is more than half of the number of employed statistician workforce. So it looks like a great occupation if you're going for the job title statistician and you're not making your way into software development, data science. There's so much overlap in this particular occupation. It's really hard to kind of draw the lines between what is a statistician and what is a data scientist, I imagine. Finally, one thing people love to do when they're trying to choose a particular career is to take a Myers-Briggs personality assessment, figure out their type, and compare their type to people in different occupations. According to the Myers-Briggs company, the most commonly found Myers-Briggs type working employed as a statistician is the ISTJ, also known as the inspector. And this is followed by the ESTJ, the director, the INTP, the thinker, and number four would be INTJ, the architect. Notice that all four of these occupations have a preference for thinking over feeling. So as you can see, there are some serious advantages to choosing to become a statistician in 2021. Statisticians are building a transferable skill set they can use in consulting, data science, software development, and so many more occupations. Statisticians often can even get a doctoral degree and teach. There are so many careers and occupations open to people focusing and learning about statistics. Statisticians do earn a pretty good wage and they've seen pretty good wage growth over the years. But one serious barrier to entry is the education. It requires at least a master's degree in order to work in so many different statistician jobs. If you enjoyed this video, definitely also check out my actuary video and or my software developer video. Both of these are occupations that statisticians can work their way into. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.